Blocking is carried out when you want to stop the flow in a pipe. Common situations are when a faulty main valve must be replaced, a new pump is to be installed or a leak must be repaired. Pipes from 15 to 50 millimetres can be blocked and clamps with non-return valves are used. The clamp package is colour coded. Select a balloon kit with the same colour. The time the balloon can block the pipe depends on the pressure and temperature. See the instructions in the package for details. Fit the clamp and drill the pipe as you would when making a branch connection with a non-return valve. Leave the adapter in place. The pressure in the piping system must now be measured. Select the support tube with the same colour code as the clamp and balloon. Undo the locking screw on the support tube housing about four turns. Release the latch by pulling on the stop ball. Insert the support tube in the bottom of the support tube housing and release the ball. Twist the support tube until the stop ball snaps into place and the tube is locked. Tighten the locking screw. It's important that the screw is properly fixed. Insert the balloon holder in the support tube until the locking pin snaps into place. Insert the complete blocking device in the adapter and into the pipe in which the pressure is to be measured. The support tube will open the non-return valve and you can read the pressure in the pipe on the gauge. Remove and dismantle the blocking device. Unscrew the balloon holder plug. Use the hexagon screwdriver to unscrew the balloon nipple until a couple of threads are visible. Remove the coloured plug in the neck of the balloon and fit the balloon to the nipple. The nipple should be fixed in the balloon groove. Screw the balloon into the balloon holder until you feel a distinct stop. This stop must be distinct. If not, there is debris in the nipple threads. In this case, unscrew the nipple again and clean the threads. It's very important that the neck of the balloon is pulled completely into the balloon holder to be properly secured. Lubricate the balloon generously with no tap lubricant. Also, lubricate the support tube. Pull out the stop ball. Use the hexagon screwdriver to press in the balloon until it just enters the support tube. Release the stop ball and tighten the plug. Press in the blocking device until the locking pin engages in the first position. Line up the black stop ball in the direction of the point at which the pipe is to be cut or repaired. Insert the entire blocking device in the adapter and secure by lowering the locking shackle over the flange. Press in the balloon until the locking pin engages in its second innermost position. Remember that the pressure in the pipe will try to force the balloon holder out when the stop ball is withdrawn. The balloon is now inside the pipe to be blocked. The smaller balloon holder is used for smaller pipes. Unlike the bigger one with two grooves, the smaller has only one. And the first position is about halfway into the pipe. Otherwise the procedure is the same as with the bigger balloon holder. The next step is to inflate the balloon so that it seals the pipe. Attach the pump hose to the valve and pump up the pressure to 10 bar above the system pressure you measured earlier. Wait one minute and then reduce the pressure to 5 bar above the system pressure using the relief cock. The pipe is now blocked. The lowermost section of the support tube now acts as a support for the balloon. It absorbs the axial pressure which may be very high and prevents the balloon moving in the direction of the flow. You can now begin work on the pipe. It may leak a little through the block depending on a welding joint or other unevenness in the pipe. This does not affect the function of the balloon but may be an irritation when you're welding and soldering. Welding or soldering must be carried out at least one meter away from the blocking point. When the work is done, deflate the balloon by unscrewing the blocking device plug. Release the locking shackle and pull the blocking device straight out of the adapter. Beware, do not pull out the stop ball. Avoid turning the device. You don't want the burrs on the edge of the hole cutting the neck of the balloon. 
Immediately the balloon is clear of the non-return valve in the clamp, the valve will close and seal against leakage. Remember to withdraw the complete blocking device. If you only release the stop ball and withdraw the balloon holder, the support tube will remain in the adapter and keep the non-return valve open. Liquid will then spray from the tube. If this happens, just release the locking shackle and pull out the support tube. If you have problems removing the balloon, pull it out until about a centimetre of the support tube is visible. Inflate the balloon again to 10 bar above the system pressure, release the air and loosen the blocking device plug. Try again. Repeat the procedure until the balloon is freed. When you've removed the balloon, cut it away from the balloon holder. Hold out the stop ball and withdraw the balloon holder from the support tube unit. Loosen the balloon holder plug and unscrew the balloon nipple with the hexagon screwdriver. Carefully remove the remains of the balloon. Unscrew the adapter when the blocking device has been removed. Finally, fit a cap to the neck of the clamp. The job is now complete.